Okay. So in today's conversation with we Senator Catherine Ardell, uh, Catherine was first elected to Dublin City Council in 2009. In 2016, she was elected to the Shannad, where she served on the Industrial and Commercial Panel. During the 25th uh, Shannad, Catherine was the Fianna Fáil Group leader and the spokesperson on social protection. Catherine has since been re-elected to the 26th Shannad. So, we will start the questions. <laughs> um, Hello, Tori. <laughs> Oh, thanks for interviewing me. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, so we will start with your early political life. So what was your earliest political memory? Right. I suppose my mum and dad were both involved in politics, as a lot of people know. And my dad's first election was in 1985 when I was about two or three years old. Um, I don't remember that election, but I do remember subsequent elections and I remember having a large sticker collection. And I remember at one stage um, collecting stickers for Brian Lenehan when he ran for the presidential election. And I remember sticking them all over the house and sticking them all over the furniture and my mum giving out to me for ruining every bit of furniture in the house. So that was probably my first political memory. Um, so there you go. That's really sweet. <laughs> That's where I started my little collection of um, political paraphernalia and uh, probably the love of the campaign. <laughs> and you still have um, all of... I have probably any... don't have the stickers, but I have a lot of <laughs> old posters from Fianna Fáil that I would have collected over the years. And, uh, and then outside of Fianna Fáil, Mary Robinson, when, I was, when she was running, I really... Um, took a fancy to Mary Robinson and thought she was super woman, leading the way for <laughs> young women to get into politics. Um, so, Seven year old. <laughs> so you grew up in a political background. Uh, did you know from an early age that you wanted to pursue a career in politics or was it later down the line? Um, it was probably a lot later down the line, to be honest with you. I was in school. I wasn't, I used to help obviously at home when there was a, an election, but I wasn't really, I didn't, never really thought I'd run for politics. I never thought I'd get involved. Um, I went off to college. I wasn't involved in Fianna Fáil OGRA until I came back and completed my degree. And I, we set up the Fianna Fáil OGRA in Dublin South Central with the likes of uh, Declan Harmon, Pauline Byrne, and Kieran O'Connell, a few others. And uh, I suppose I got into Fianna Fáil at that stage. And in 2009, I ran for the first time for local politics and was unsuccessful. But uh, no, I didn't have the privilege of being a member of Irish uh, University OGRA like you guys. <laughs> Looked like it was good fun though. I would have met Dara sooner. <laughs> <laughs> um, so even with, um, you know, the enjoyment and job satisfaction, um, what do you enjoy most about being a senator? Um, I suppose, um, my favourite thing about being a public rep, whether it be a councillor or whether it be a senator, and if I had been elected a TD, is just the interaction with the public. Um, I really enjoy meeting people, listening to their stories, if I can, helping them. Especially, I suppose what we do mostly is we do, you know, we help individuals with their interactions with the state. Reps I get at the moment would, would be a lot of social welfare reps, housing reps. And it's nice to be able to, you know, facilitate that and to help people in that regard. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know how to interact with the state and they don't have the resources available to them. So that's where we step in. It is a version of clientelism, which isn't ideal, but that's the system that we're working with at the moment in Ireland. And in terms of achievements, what stands out for you the most? It doesn't have to be one achievement, it can be. Um, well, we did various things in the last Janet. Um, I suppose we supported the Social Democrats' parental leave bill. Um, it, it sort of dried up, it, it sort of stopped dead in the doll. Um, we used our private members' time, which I led in the Janet, to bring that in. That was a good achievement. Then in the Janet, there was other bills that we supported, from uh, mental health capacity bills to um, a, a, there was a probate bill uh, sort of to keep a wills registry, which, we, which Terry Layden had and we supported. There was also the domestic violence legislation, which um, brought in the a crime of coercive, coercive control, which was a huge step for women's rights. I supported the um, legislation to repeal the Eighth Amendment. You know, the various things, I suppose, 
not nothing that you can sort of put your hand on and say one person did that alone but that's not really how it works in politics people work together and you can only get things done if you have the support of of a group of people yeah definitely except Michal Martin who brought in the smoking ban he can claim <laughs> so victory for that yeah, well that was 2003 wasn't it, it was brought in 2004 yeah, yeah. I remember I only even up a small when that came in. <laughs> Probably the most important piece of public health legislation. Yeah. And then I'm going to talk about then ask a question then on the you know the challenges or even advice. So you gave birth to uh, baby twins Dara and Sean Oak 16 days before the general election was called. Like how was that? Um, the blur. I remember nothing. <laughs> I remember nothing. <laughs> so um, I remember it being fuzzy. <laughs> oh, I just think like you know, being like um, you know, a first time mum with newborns, like contesting the general election, like, like you know, you were right knocking on doors, full speed ahead in the campaign, and you know, you showed a, a huge amount of determination. Like it was extremely admirable. Like, how did you keep so driven during this period? Like, how did you balance a campaign? newborns and just you know recovery during this time well i have to say i had huge amount of support and um, like I, I was recounting it the other day we had like eight people helping minding the babies and we're down to just myself and dara now <laughs> so it's a huge yeah uh, it's a huge change it was hu i had a huge amount of support so that let me sort of take a few hours out every day to go canvassing and um, which was great and um, ultimately we, wasn't, we didn't succeed, but we were very close and we put in a great campaign, had a super team and the team of canvassers really helped as well because they kept a bit of momentum, they kept energy because it's hard because usually you need the candidate to be there to drive the campaign. And I wasn't able to be there like I would have been in previous campaigns and I wasn't able to be the centre of it. I sort of joined when I could for the canvassing. Uh, so it wasn't ideal. The timing was pretty awful. Um, but we got through it and we put a great show in and you know we were able to hold our heads up high and um, we met a lot of people where there was so much support we got nearly 5,000 votes so it's not to be you know I couldn't say I we didn't do good we didn't do well it was just unfortunate the timing and it was unfortunate that there was a Sinn Féin surge on the day yeah. which we, we, we not nobody saw coming so I wouldn't say it was because of the twins that we didn't manage it I think, it was, I think we did everything we possibly could but yeah yes, no stone turned and we had a great campaign and great people involved in it most definitely but I think though that what you did though a lot of people wouldn't be able to do and I think most people just thought you were absolutely fantastic actually getting up and going out um, and as I said I'm not gonna lie it was physically <laughs> demanding <laughs> <laughs> I would say so but you know I definitely don't think it, very few people will be able to do it and I do think that people need to know that you were so determined to write it all and you even when you were in pain you had a brave face to write it all and you know I just think that was great and you know everything happened for a reason as well Absolutely. Um, so even like even not long after then the general election, there was um, you were contesting the Shannon elections. Um, how did you find traveling around Ireland during that time? That was it, it was that was hard to get as well because I became a little bit more attached to the babies. Obviously, I was attached from the beginning, but you when you get to know, it was harder leaving them because I was less fuzzy. Um, so every and I for the general, I was back and forth every few hours. Whereas for the Shannon election, I would have left the house at 8 a.m. and I was back at 11 at night. Yeah. So that was hard. Um, and did just you ever take the <laughs> Well, we did when we went to Donegal. We went, spent a few nights when we were doing the Northwest. We brought them with us because um, we stayed and did a few of the counties like Sligo, Leitrim, Donegal. <laughs> and it was nice to have them up there with us. A so nice we, we anyway. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> And on our way back, we stopped off at a few councillors and things like that. So <laughs> definitely were on the campaign trail for the general and the, the Shannon election. That is without a doubt. <laughs> They're like the youngest out. campaigners in the country. I think most definitely. Um, 
what advice would you give to, let's say, your younger self or even to young women starting out in politics? Um, okay, I would say probably keep going. Don't give up. You, like, it took me a while to, like, my first elections, I suppose, were internal elections within our uh, Corella Dáil Cantor. And I remember going for a few positions and not getting it. And internal politics can be tricky as well. So, that, like, that's the first <laughs> hurdle. And then I went for the local elections in 2009 and I lost by 100 votes, but I just stuck with it and I ran again in 2014 and I was successful. And then I ran again in 2016, I was unsuccessful. Then the Shannon, I was successful. The Dáil unsuccessful, Shannon successful. So it just, it's sort of like any job or anything you're doing, just get up in the morning and just, if you want to do it, just keep doing it, keep going and don't, um, don't, don't get distracted, just stick with, the plan if you have it in your head and stick with if you have a goal stick with your goals because you won't always achieve it immediately it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of work um, and and you know things don't happen quickly they happen very slowly and i think politics sometimes it can be a really long short short sort of lifespan where people um get really famous or popular very quickly and that's great if it works like that for you or sometimes i suppose i'm probably um, more sort of, I wouldn't say old school, but more traditional um, type politician where I concentrate on individuals. My base at this stage would probably be based on people who I've met or people who I have helped try to do a lot more, a bit more, a lot more, a lot more policy stuff, you know, in the last Shannad and we have a, like a ambitious sort of target of things to get through for the next Shannad to sort of move away from the clientelism of Irish politics, but ultimately the support I get is from individuals who I have, you know, gotten to know and who've gotten to know me and who've gained my tr trust and I've gained their trust. And um, so it's just, if you want to be in politics, it's, um, you know, you have to take a sort of a long view approach, I think, and uh, do things incrementally and just stick with it, have a plan. Yeah, because there's this, sometimes people would say that, you know, women, it's, they would find it harder now it, to be involved with politics because they would always say this, and I don't know, do I agree with that, that you have to pick between your career or, you know, uh, being a mother. And I think that's what sometimes puts people off in going further um, in politics. <laughs> Yeah, I can see absolutely the challenges in terms of minding children. It was, you know, it's a huge full-time job. I have so much respect for people who do it um, on a full-time basis. As I say, we were able to, I was able to take part in the general election campaign because I had so much, so much, so many people helping me with the babies. Um, obviously at the moment, I was with a lot of people who were working from home and looking after children and that's challenging itself. Um, in some ways, you're sort of looking forward to going back to work and, you know, the crutch is reopening. <laughs> but I am one very glad to have this time with them that I would not have had, had COVID not um, happened. I'm, you know, unfortunately, it's such an awful crisis. It's such a horrible, um, it's such a horrible virus, such a killer virus. But um, it's given me the time to spend with my, my, my two sons, which is fantastic. Um, but I suppose it's going to change a lot for all of us and it's going to change the way we work and the way we live and the way we do everything, socialise. Yeah, uh, it's scary. It's really frightening and people are frightened and especially elderly people and people living alone and those cocooning like my mom and my aunties and those we love. It's very scary and right. hope they can uh, get a vaccine or a treatment soon. Hopefully, fingers crossed. And I, I think they're saying that there could be one before Christmas or one after, but hopefully there's one. Very scary. <laughs> Very soon. Um, just yeah. the sittings of the Dáil and the Shannon, that we really need to look into having them, you know, remotely, like the Supreme Court have sat remotely yesterday for the first time via uh, Zoom. And I think we need to look at, you know, Dahl, remote Dáil and Shannon sittings, not just for pandemics, but for, you know, to facilitate women as well in politics. Uh, so yeah. they can from home if they have to exactly. and have the option of going in yeah that it, it's, a, it's a really good idea to actually bring forward because it allows them then to be able to do both 
Um, so then you're not kind of picking and choosing, you're able to balance it out equally. And then yeah. to kind of stay on the topic of females across the board in pretty much every country, there's a lack of females in politics. Is there anything you'd say to young women or even older women to encourage them to get involved? Yeah, I suppose you need to sort of push yourself a little bit. You know, if someone asks you, jump at it. Yeah, you, you know, that you, that no one's going to ask you twice to get involved. Um, obviously, being in, being a member of a party does help because, you know, they have resources to help you with printing of leaflets and just a bit of structure. So I would say running as an independent great, but having the support of a party can be very helpful as well. So don't discount it. Obviously, you have to have your views have to somewhat marry with that of the party you decide to join. But I think being a member of Fianna Fáil definitely has helped me in terms of support I got, um, with, especially with literature, canvassing, and just having the wider Fianna Fáil family, OGRA, um, members across the country. Um, it's, a, it's a great support when things are down, when you're down or if you're having a bad day. So I say join a party. You can get things done within a party. And uh, childcare obviously is an issue, but um, I just say if you want to do it, you know, put yourself forward and, you know, have to, have the have the, have the guts to do it. And people will support you if, if yeah. you know, you just need one supporter. You don't need hundreds of supporters. You just need one person, another person. You need to believe in yourself, and you need just one person, one more person to believe in you. Yeah, I definitely believe in that, um, because that can go a long way. Even someone just even encourage you to. Run. Absolutely. Make the biggest difference. Yeah. You need <laughs> um, to want to do it yourself as well. Yeah, exactly. So what's it like being a senator? <laughs> well, it's a huge privilege and I can't believe I'm back in the Senate. I think I'm, I'm, I'm really honoured. We I got to meet all the amazing councillors across the country who do so much work that they don't get the proper recognition for. Especially now during COVID, they're out doing uh, meals on wheels looking after vulnerable members of their community they are they're really the backbone of um, especially in urban ireland and rural ireland and um, so i got to meet these amazing men and women across the country and they gave me um, a chance again to represent them in chandler and i'm really very grateful to them um, it's a huge privilege it's great to be able to raise issues for yourself and also for other people in the shannon um, and it does, you know, you can get results, especially in relation to immigration matters. We were quite successful. One of your members, Amar Ali, is very good at um, sort of funneling through a lot of, uh, of the problems that are affecting the migrant community. And we've gotten a lot of successes, a lot of wins that way, um, where we were able to highlight um, different problems directly with the minister in the Shannon. So it, it can work and it, it does work. And I'm going to move on to another question and it's something like I've always been intrigued about and it's like it's it's somewhat you so your life or your career is somewhat in the public eye like you know what's that like because you know there is some media outlets may not portray you know politicians in the most favor favorable way like how do you overcome public negativity like if you have ever experienced it um, because I think that's one reason why some people are afraid to run in politics is because yeah. of that criticism in the media that they may get. Well, one thing I'd say, politicians, you're not going to get all oh, this amazing um, appraisal and, and love from the media. And I think if that's what you're after, you're probably, you're not, you know, you're not in the right job. Like, that's not what it's about, getting likes on Twitter or, you know, being appraised by, um, by the by the public but I think you you know we do get some online abuse you know some nasty messages but most of the time you know are the Irish public and the Irish media wouldn't really be that interested in in your personal life or you know if you make a silly mistake that has political ramifications surely you have to be scrutinized for that and that's fair enough but um I, I personally I've had got some online abuse but nothing that would has bothered me too much i probably mute a lot of people and i don't read a lot of negative stuff if i if i see that it's going to be negative it's always pretty clear when someone's a bit of a hater so i think it's easy to to press the mute button and not yeah. get too in, involved in the hate 
I just, I know like from me, like I just feel that, you know, that you're trying to do your very best and just people constantly trying to knock you. It's, I know that would, like, it, I would hate that. I feel like it would affect my self-esteem when you are trying to do the best you possibly can. Um, so. I suppose it depends on the individual. Um, I have, I maybe that's one of the things I grew, grew up in a house where, uh, like my dad was a politician, my mum was a politician, and there was always a bit of abuse, you know, thrown at my dad or my mum, and you sort of just learn to ignore it. Yeah. Maybe that's one of the benefits of growing up in a political household. <laughs> you get used to, you can shut the, those things out, but I suppose, again, it's something you'll probably learn with time as well, mm. um, that you would get when you're around for <laughs> quite some time. Other people. I have seen other people. Yeah, it is. I can see how people can get upset by it um, as well. Um, but I haven't been maybe the victim yet of a huge, massive ca uh, ca hate campaign. And please God, I'm not. Touch wood. <laughs> <laughs> Touch wood. <laughs> so then we're going to move on to your hobbies and social life. So what would like what do you enjoy doing in your spare time? My spare time, I love meeting up with my friends and I miss them hugely and just <laughs> chatting and going for long walks. I uh, used to play a lot of sport. I used to play tennis and hockey. Haven't played them for a long time. I like also going to the gym um, and I haven't done that obviously either since before I was <laughs> pregnant. So I'm actually putting on, you know, <laughs> not too much exercise at the moment but I like doing exercise hill walking my friends are probably the you know the people I spend the most time with when I'm not doing them when I'm not involved in politics they keep me keep me grounded and I've had friends for a long time and you know let's say you've had a hard day in the Janet how would you actually like what would be your downtime as such like if if you had a stressful day what would you do kind of relief uh, probably, probably just call my pals or go for a walk uh now it's a bit different because i have the two boys to feed so they'll probably just distract me from anything you just <laughs> once you're feeding them and changing them and it's like forever it's like a, a roller coaster of nappies feeding washing um but i'm sure we'll you know that's pretty distracting at this stage and but, i suppose they make you laugh as well yeah, they do. They have their own little personalities, which is great. They're shining through. <laughs> um, and I was going to ask you then, was your social life ever impacted down through the years, like due to your like involvement in politics? Absolutely. So Saturday mornings for a politician are you have to be upbeat and, you know, out canvassing. Every politician in the country is out on a Saturday morning. I'm working all day Saturday and Sunday at various events or canvassing. So uh friday nights i probably wouldn't go out i'd stay in so that i'm up first on a saturday and um, because i consider saturday a working day and uh, so yeah i w probably would not see my friends as much and we even during the week if they were meeting up i'd usually have a residence meeting or you know some event to go to so in that regard your social life is uh, affected but you don't really mind you know it's not that big a deal um i enjoy going to residence meetings yeah, it's still, it's just different. It's not your close, close friends, but there's still people you like hanging out with and uh, I still enjoy it. I, I, I wouldn't be involved if I didn't enjoy it. So no lions on a Saturday. <laughs> no lions. <laughs> oh, I, uh, that might put some people off going into the job. <laughs> yeah, but then it's nice to get up on a Saturday and have a walk and meet a few people, have chats with everyone. Yeah. And one thing, though, I really like, like you're intrigued is, you know, even when you were younger as a teenager, how was that like with, you know, your mum and dad being both, you know, politicians? Um, you know, as in, did anyone ever give you a bit of stick over it or were people very supportive? Or let's say, did you, did you have to go to Camasin some days when you didn't want to have to go to Camasin? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. You'd have to go out all the time. Like my dad was forever leaflet dropping, so like it was never an excuse. 
you see in the house you'd be like oh, i'll just sit here and you'd be like here's a here's 100 leaflets go and deliver them or <laughs> so you're always on the go there was always a job to be done sort of like farming the cows are never milked like there's always stuff to be doing <laughs> So it's a busy, busy career. I feel like you're like you never kind of get to just sit down. It's always go, go, go. But I suppose always go, go, go. Yeah. But I suppose like even now my house is like really quiet because there's no one in it. It's really <laughs> strange because during the campaign it was like a train station, people coming in and out, like people having keys who are barely new. And um, so now with this, it's uh, strange having just the four of us in the house. But at least you have some peace and quiet, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then with the two boys, Dara and Sean Oak, would you like to see them in the future uh, running for an election? Mm, I wouldn't have any, yeah, um, whatever they want to do. I don't know what they'll want to do. I would support them. I wouldn't really support it or condone it or condemn it. Um, I think if they want to be involved in politics, they can but I wouldn't be pushing it on them um, I'd like them to have just a nice happy life whatever that is I hope they're happy and confident and that's all you want I suppose of your kids it's, and just yeah that they're happy and you know that they're safe as Fulfilled. well exactly, exactly. Healthy. Really, <laughs> you'll definitely though have to mind the uh, canvas and the, um, then they can't uh, they can't say no because no you're their mum. And then you'd say, well, I don't know when I was younger, so you can't get out of it. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I think, though, they'll definitely, at least one of them will be interested in getting involved with it, I'd say, and running in the future. Maybe. But I wouldn't force them. I'd like them to be doctors or nurses now. I'm like, oh, they seem like to be like the only useful people in society <laughs> at the moment. And the old shop assistants. So yeah. we won't, um, I won't push anything on them. I feel utterly useless at home being a politician at the moment. Because you really I'm like, like wonder should we be like volunteering? I try to volunteer, but I'm because you're living with babies, you can't really go out into the community and help. Yeah, I you feel like bring anything back to them. Yeah, I think a lot of politicians probably feel somewhat helpless because your whole job is to help people. Um, and I feel like I suppose they can't do that. Some are they are out and about trying their best, but yeah. You're on the phone still doing reps. Like there's a lot of reps coming in for like a lot of the social welfare payments. Yeah. Um. There's that. Um. So it's keeping you busy. But, um, <laughs> it's keeping you busy, but you feel like you should be in Leinster House questioning um, minister, and you'd like to, I really would like to see some sort of a, a virtual parliament. I think like other countries have done it. Spain has done it, where like some members sit in parliament and some members are at home on Zoom. You know, there is a way, there is a method. So yeah, and are you allowed to go into Leinster House? No, or yeah, we can go in to check our post and go on and plug our computers in. But everyone... we're essential. We're essential workers. Okay. You know, one of your favourite things about going out in Camelson? Um... Just chatting to people because you sort of get to know them as you, you know, because I suppose I've knocked on people's doors in Dublin South Central over like every, about 10 times. Like some people are like, I've known you since you were like 12. Cause you've been knocking on my door twice a year. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say like, they were like, would you ever give up? Like <laughs> determination. They were like, literally, we know you since you're little from knocking on our door. Like I'm some, you know, saleswoman, little sales <laughs> truck going around. But that is nice, though. Like being able to kind of go back to doors and they remember you and you remember them because it kind of builds up some sort of like a friendship almost. Um, and it doesn't come like I think as cross as like camps and it kind of comes across as. I know. Friend. <laughs> yeah, you do. You get to meet so many. You get to build relationships with loads of people all over the constituency, which is great. Which is which is nice. Like it makes it easier when you're going around. You're like, ah, I know this lady in this house, or I know that man. Yeah. And you sort of built up a little rapport with them. Like there's a Dublin side central is huge. Like it's a massive yeah. constituency. And um, it's so different as well. It's so varied. It's like different people from different backgrounds and. Yeah. which makes it a little bit more um interesting and you know makes the people are you know so diverse so yeah. you never get bored of meeting people <laughs> um and then i'm going to ask you uh five questions really fast <laughs> okay oh, okay um, go on so the first one is do you prefer barry's tea or lion's lion's tea 
Okay, I used to drink berries, but I heard that they have plastic in their tea bags, so I don't know if that's true or not. But if it is true, I'm going to go for Lyons. I'd always be a Lyons uh, tea woman myself. <laughs> um, a politician you admire from a different part from a different party. Oh, I did that on Twitter the other day, and I picked um, a No Brown, the former Minister for Health, who brought in the Mother and Child Scheme, and then I picked Mary White, who was one of the first Green Party um, ministers in the 1997 coalition of Fianna Fáil. She's a real lady and amazing woman. I also picked Lucinda Creighton because I think she, I know Lucinda and she's a formidable woman. And I picked Jim Walsh because he was Fianna Gael TD at Dublin South Central and he was a very good friend of my dad's and I got to know him a lot very well and he was a real gentleman as well and he did a lot of work for Dublin South Central. They were my four politicians and I decided not to go ones with everyone knows. So these guys are, uh, should be celebrated in their own right as well. And recognised. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, your favourite place outside Dublin? Um, Carnivan Beach in Wexford. Because um, I used to go there. We have a little, my mum has a little sort of cottage there and we used to go down as kids. And it's so beautiful. So that's probably my favourite place. Yeah. And will you Jumping take the rock. <laughs> You'll take the boys down there when they're a bit older then. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully. We're allowed to leave Dublin ever again. Yeah, because <laughs> a lot of people are like to me, oh, I'll see you in six months. I'm like, don't say that. <laughs> no, desperate. And the right. last question is uh, describe your life so far using three film titles. Um, see, I'm, I, I'm getting this confused in my head with films I really like. Like, I love Shawshank's Redemption, that's one of my favourite movies. Well, we can change, we'll change the question around and we'll say your three favourite movies. <laughs> okay, okay, so Shawshank's Redemption. And then as a kid, I used to love a vampire movie. I can't remember what it's called, but it was like Count Dracula. <laughs> and then I loved also the movie Overboard. So that's kind of really that, Catherine. Thanks again so much. And... No problem. Okay, bye. Thanks, Thanks. <laughs>